Hi guys, my name is Suzanne Grandy. I'm a certified master groomer in Tampa, Florida, and I am here with Sarah Beth, the Havanese. She is here for a groom, and we are going to get started on her. She's going to keep a full coat with a little bit of hair trimmed around her eyes, around her feet, and under her tail. So let's get busy. Come on, Sarah, to the tub. We're going to use Squalling Care by iGroom products on her. These work really good for these long full coats. Get the water warming up. This is the product. Shampoo and conditioner. Hi, baby. Hi, how are you doing? When I clean her ears, I'll be using Betoquinol Ear Cleansing Solution. Baby, we're waiting on the water to warm up. Meanwhile, I'm just comforting her, letting her know everything's okay. Checking her over for any matting. My clients are required to bring dogs in tangle free which means they should be doing the pre-bath brush out at home the day before or the morning of the grooming appointment. She's a Havanese, so she is a talker. Most Havanese do talk while they're being worked on. The water's nice and warm. Not too warm, of course, though. I try to keep my water set right around 90 degrees. I do have a digital inline water heater where I can set my temperature precisely. In my salon, I charge $65 for the first hour of work and $1.25 for each minute after the hour is up. So if clients bring their dogs in tangle free and in good condition, that helps me to be able to get the work done on dogs under 15 pounds within that hour's time. Certain dogs like Bichons, Bedlington Terriers, and fancy pattern trims do take longer than the hour's time. Those I do require to be booked by phone so that we can schedule enough time for those haircuts. And they do typically run more based on the same pricing structure. $65 for the first hour and $1.25 a minute after the first hour is up. Silly 
I do not clean anal glands in my salon. To clean anal glands correctly, your finger has to be stuck up the dog's rectum, which is crossing from the outside of the dog to the inside of the dog. In my opinion, any crossing of that barrier becomes veterinary territory. So I do recommend that anal glands be cleaned at the animal hospital. I'm going to use the squalling care conditioner. Stay, thank you. It's important to be careful not to get any product in their eyes, regardless of how wiggly they are on their face. The conditioner all worked through her coat. When rinsing the conditioner, it's important to get every bit of conditioner out of the hair. The cleaner and um, the least amount of any product that's being left in the coat helps to keep the coat tangle free because a very, very clean, very well rinsed coat will not attract dirt. Which then in turn will mat up the hair. A very well rinsed coat will also 
cause skin to be less itchy. And itching and scratching will definitely mat up a dog's coat. does not like her head messed with at all. survived the whole battle. So now I'm going to spray the tub out with barbicide disinfectant. And this will simply dry onto the tub until we're ready to start our next dog. I do use paw mats in the tub. This gives the dog sure footing and a comfortable place to stand. Now it's time to get dry. So we're going to the drying table. I'm going to put a bath mat on top to absorb any water off the bottom of the dog. Here we go. Good girl. And I will turn the dryer on and have the dryer on while I do her nails and while I wipe out her ears. This will keep her warm.
I'm going to spray some Squalane Care leave-in conditioner on her before I start brushing. This makes her coat easier to brush through and it gives the coat some protection from the dryer because these long coats do take longer to blow dry. I'm using a Madden pen brush on her.
girl. Look at that hairy puppy. Look at that hairy puppy. Oh my goodness, she's so hairy. She's so hairy, Ty. You happy now? Are you happy now? Huh? You know what I got? I got a cookie for you. Yes, I do. I have cookies for Sarah Beth because she's a good. She likes her cookies. Yes, she does. Oh, she likes her cookies. I'm just giving her little bits. Not too much, just itty bitty ones, but she loves her rewards. Yes, she does. She loves her rewards because she did a good job. Yeah, she did a good job. All right. Now I'm going to use my silicone free three in one conditioner. I'm going to lightly mist her over to reduce the static because the blow drying, as you can see, has her hair everywhere. Normally I use Magic Mist, but I am out of that. So I am using the silicone free instead. I'm brushing all her hair into place. Now I'm going to take a wide tooth comb and I'm going to start the comb through process. Anytime a long haired dog gets washed, anytime a dog period gets washed, it should be brushed and combed from one end of the body to the other, from the skin out to the ends. The combing is the most important part of the entire bath. This ensures that no hair is left tangled and it ensures any loose hairs are removed from the coat. This does not hurt, but she has had knots in her hair in the past. So she has memories of when knots were pulled on and she warns me when she gets to her trigger areas to be careful that those are places where she's had knots in the past. So here I found a knot. What I'm going to do is pull the hair completely away from the knot, all the good hair. And I want to isolate that knot, which is right here. I'm gonna gently pull it apart with my fingers. Pick at it with the brush. And there is another one here. Pull that one apart with my fingers. Stay, baby. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Okay, get it with the brush. Stay. This can be done gently, but it has to be acceptable to the pet. And it's very tedious work when it's done gently. Here in these areas on her back end, I do not mind cutting these out for sanitary purposes. It's okay, baby. So now we're gonna continue on with the comb through. I know. 
And like I said, she's a very talkative dog anyway. This is one of her memory areas where she gets fussy. She did good with that. It's all right, Mama. <clears throat> I know it's all right. So we have another knot here. Good girl. This one's kind of large. Pull it apart with my fingers, being careful not to pull on our skin. Pick it with the brush. Make sure you get these loose pieces out because if you leave them in, they will mat in the hair. That's why the comb through is so important because you can think your dog is completely brushed, but if you don't do the comb through, how can you be sure? And you're gonna be leaving all these little loose fluffy pieces in there which will just felt right back up in mat. It's okay. Her mom did a very good job keeping her face done this time. That's been a big trouble area for mom, which has the dog not happy about having her face combed because it's been a trouble area, which means it's been allowed to mat and then having to get brushed out has not been a comfortable process for the dog. The only way keeping a full coat on a dog is a comfortable process is if the pet parent does the homework and keeps the dog Properly brushed and combed at all times. Never ever allowing mats. And of course with a dog with this much coat. You're going to have tangles. Just like any person with long hair is going to have tangles. The important part is staying ahead of it. And doing it as frequently as need be to never have any more than what I'm removing today. You want to be sure to comb all the way to the skin on the ears themselves, under the ears, through the beard. So this is the area where she's had a lot of mats in the past. Like I said, mom's done a very good job this time, but the dog still has memories of mats being in through here. So it's going to take her some time to not be reactive 
You just have to give her time to get over that. So we want to get up under the dog. It's not hurting her today, but she does have memories again. Some people think keeping long hair on a dog is cruel. And I can assure you it's not as long as the pet parent is completely dedicated to the dog's coat. Using the right tools, like a gentle pen brush and a wide tooth comb to make sure there's no unnecessary tugging on the dog's hair using super high quality conditioners and shampoos. Good girl. All right, so now I'm gonna mist her over again. And I'm going to redo the comb through process with a fine tooth comb. This will ensure that any, any loose hairs are removed and not caught up in the long hair. And this comb through should go much faster than the last one because any and all knots should be removed, but you can see I just loosened up a little piece there. Definitely don't want to leave that in the hair. Come on, boo. I've got 10 minutes to finish her to ensure we stay within our one hour time frame to keep our price at our base price of $65. Good girl. All right. So now we're going to trim her. She doesn't get much. I'm going to use a 30 pad on the our 30 blade on the pads of her feet. It's a good girl. Keep all the clippings away so they don't get caught up in the dog's long hair. Turn. Good girl. <clears throat> Good girl. Now I'm going to switch to a ten blade and lightly trim the corners of the eyes. I have some clients who keep full coat on their dog's faces. Others do appreciate a light trimming. Depends on the individual person, the individual dog, and how good they are at keeping the hair tied up out of the dog's eyes. Do a belly with tin blade. I do shell out the underside of her to keep it easier to brush out at home. Not all the way, but a little higher up. And I'm going to trim under her tail and her private areas. It's all right. Now 
some dogs I do keep a full belly coat on and other dogs if it's more difficult for them to be brushed out I shell it out underneath depends on the individual and the pet owner's desires good girl stand so now I'm going to trim around her feet I keep big fat feet on my full coated dogs So basically I'm trimming off the front, putting the foot back on the floor, rounding it out very large, and then making sure nothing falls below the pads. This way. Oh, I know. No fussy, fussy. It's a fussy, fussy girl. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I typically groom live daily from 10 to 4. I also typically go on Sunday nights between 5.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time where I ask, answer all your questions. I just simply devote an hour of time to answer any questions that you might have. So be sure to join us for that. My live grooming is 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So for her, I do trim a slight bang so that she can wear her hair up or down. baby without worrying about it getting in her eyes behave yourself behave just behave It's not very nice. No, it's not. Good girl. What are you doing? 
And now we are going to give her a cute Valentine's bow. Yeah, you get a cute Valentine's bow. Yes, you do. Typically, I do ask that pet owners request a bow or a bandana to cut down on costs and not put them on dogs who do not want them. When you put a bow in a dog's hair, be sure that your lines around the bow are very straight and that the hair you put up is completely combed through and straight. I usually wrap the rubber band around three times. To get the bow out, it's best to cut the band. And you want to take your comb, run it between the band and the skull. Be sure that the comb comes out the other side. You never want any skin caught up in there. It's important to check and make sure And she is done right on time. So let's give her a treat for doing such a good job. Yes, you get a treat for doing such a good job. Yes, you do. Miss Suzanne's got treats for you. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. He's got treats. Oh, you're the manners. Can you sit? There you go. Good girl. Good girl, Sarah Beth. All right, Sarah Beth, can you tell everybody goodbye? Look, say goodbye, everybody. She says, I want my treat. Bye. We'll see you next time.